How's it going everyone? It is Panjano here and in today's video we're quickly going to be covering the best monitor settings you should be making use of whether you're running a high-end desktop, low-end desktop, laptop or even console whatever it is that is connected to your monitor regardless of how good or bad the monitor is in this video we're going to be covering the necessary options you should know and want to adjust to get the best performance out of your monitor whether it's color accuracy, visual fidelity, low response times or just unlocking features which should be available to you and covering a few common mistakes which you may be making which will stop you from being able to access some of the features you can use to get the best overall experience out of your monitor. This video is going to act as a more universal guide as to what you should look for for your monitor and your PC settings rather than an individual specific monitor model. Some of the features we're covering in this video could have slightly different names depending on what brand your monitor is from and anytime we cover one of these features in the video I'll list a few of the other common names for it in the bottom right hand side of the screen. On the topic of getting the most out of your system that is where today's video sponsor Opera GX comes in. Opera GX is a gaming web browser which allows you to take full control of your web browsing experience by being able to limit the amount of resources the browser has access to so you can have it as fast or as lightweight as you would like. Fully customize the web browser with different themes, animated backgrounds and has a ton of inbuilt features such as pop out video view whilst you're browsing other tabs, hot tabs killer. This will give you a quick rundown as to what applications are taking up what percentage of your CPU and RAM usage. You can quickly close out of this tab. Next up is Twitch which I also don't need running in the background which is spiking my CPU usage so we'll also be closing out of that. If you're looking to make the switch over to Opera GX but you're worried you might be losing some of your bookmarks or other browser data Go to search settings, type import, scroll down to synchronization, select import bookmarks and settings. Select the browser you're going to be importing these settings from, select the settings you wish to port over, select import, done. It's also worth noting that Google Chrome extensions also work in Opera GX. Scroll down to your desired extension or search for it, click on the extension, then select add to Opera, add extension. You can also quickly and easily set up custom animated backgrounds by navigating to the top right hand side to the three lines, scrolling down to easy setup, selecting use custom wallpaper, get more wallpapers, select animated. Once you've found the background you want to go with, select add to opera, select use custom wallpaper, then select the wallpaper in which you've just installed. One of my favorite features of Opera GX is the GX profile system, which allows you to quickly and easily set up custom browser profiles for different usage settings. Selecting GX at the top, manage GX profiles. Add new profile. Our configuration presets, we have Rogue, which is our incognito browsing. Streaming, which will hide private and confidential information. Potato will automatically limit the browser down to super low usage for potato PCs. I'm I'm just going to be calling this lightweight, select add new profile. If I close out of my main browser, then open up this yellow Opera GX icon, this will then open up my customized browser running that profile on which we set up earlier. So unlock more performance and customization from your web browser today by downloading Opera GX using my link at the top of the description down below and let me know what your favorite feature of Opera GX is in the comment section down below. Before changing the settings, we first of all need to ensure that we're using the correct output and the correct input. It's surprising how many times people go out and buy a brand new high resolution or high refresh rate monitor, they hook it up with the existing cables or they just grab one at random, hook it up, jump in and start using it without changing any settings. This will widely depend on the monitor specs in which you are using and will typically only really affect high resolution, high refresh rate monitors such as QHD 1440p above 144Hz. You should be able to find documentation which will list all the display outputs for your device and what spec they are rated for. You then want to use the highest spec output as possible for your best monitor. With that hooked up, you then need to look at the monitor inputs as usually these are not created equal. Some lower end 4K 100 144Hz monitors don't actually support HDMI 2.1 which is required to support 4K at 120Hz. Some of the cheaper models will only support this over display port so if you are using a PC and wanting to get 4K 120Hz you would be required to hook this up via a display port unless both your graphics card and monitor both support HDMI 2.1. Do a quick google search for either your graphics card or console's output information then turn over the monitor find the make and model for the monitor look around online and you should be able to find that information there. On your console or PC Navigate through the menus until you find the display settings. On a Windows PC, you'll want to then navigate over to your display resolution. Scroll all the way up to the highest, which should be listed as recommended, and select the highest resolution available. Past this, we can navigate down to advanced display settings, go to refresh rate, and set this to the highest refresh rate which is available. For me, I have a 4K 144Hz monitor. So I have both those options available, I can set them both, and they both work fantastically. But if the option for 144Hz wasn't available and I could only see 60, that might require me to change over to a different cable. So if I only had 60 hertz available with inside of here, I would switch over to using a display port cable to see if that then unlocks the full 144 hertz. Or your HDMI cable may not support HDMI 2.1. We will then need to source a HDMI 2.1 cable as the individual cable standard might not support the bandwidth required for such a high resolution at a high refresh rate. With the refresh rate and resolution set to the correct values for your monitor, we can then access the settings panel built into the monitor itself. This can be done in a number of different ways. If you're on a modern gaming display, you're more than likely going to have a small joystick 
joystick at the back of your monitor or a few buttons. Inside of this gigabyte monitor, I just have to push the joystick up and I'm then delivered into the main settings menu. Depending on your make, model and manufacturer, your settings menu is more than likely going to look completely different to mine, but most of these options should be available in one way or another inside of most settings menus on most displays. First setting I would recommend changing before making any other adjustments would be to navigate inside of your display options and see if you can find HDMI or display port range, this may also be called RGB PC range. Make sure you select the option which has the widest RGB range possible, which is typically 0 to 255. Next up, we're going to be jumping into the advanced features of the monitor. Most modern gaming monitors will typically come with a shadow increase, boost black levels or black equalizer setting, which can be useful, especially if you play games which are quite dark. This isn't going to do much in terms of color accuracy, but if you are someone that wants to tailor their experience towards a competitive environment, boosting those dark levels can help, but it is definitely personal preference. This then leads us down to the most important option inside of most modern monitors, which will help you achieve the lowest input latency possible. This option is known as overdrive. This will typically typically be available on nearly all monitors. The higher or more aggressive you set your overdrive level, you could run into issues such as inverse ghosting or smearing. When adjusting your monitor's overdrive setting, I would recommend doing two tests whilst you do this. First of all, I'd recommend doing a test by opening UFO.com, which will provide you with a scrolling UFO which you'll be able to use quickly and easily to see if any settings you're adjusting are starting to make your image in motion look terrible on your monitor. Alternatively, if you don't like this test or would like to do a second test, I'd recommend booting up one of your favourite FPS games, whether it be Apex Legends, Warzone, on whatever device it is that you use, and I'd recommend doing a slow to medium speed motion test by simply moving the mouse or joystick stick around in a small circle whilst looking at objects in the distance or objects close up. This is best done in a slightly darker room or darker environment as this will really stress the monitor's dark level smearing performance, especially when using looser or more aggressive overdrive timings. Start with your default overdrive setting, then go one more aggressive than this. For me I have picture quality enabled, I'm then going to set this to balanced, do my test, this still looks good to me, I'm then going to go with the highest overdrive speed possible which is speed. Now with speed I am getting a slight bit of inverse ghosting which isn't particularly noticeable to me in most cases as I'm usually playing very fast paced first person shooters and I'd rather have the reduction in response times than the slightly more accurate colours. Everyone's going to be different when it comes to the setting so it is best to find what you are most comfortable with but the general rule of thumb is you want to set it as high as possible where you are still more than happy with the visuals in which you are getting. With our overdrive settings dialed in we can then go over to the picture settings where you'll typically have a few default presets available to you. For the most part if you're not super fussed about colour accuracy I'd recommend going through the different presets and finding what looks best on the surface to you. Once you've found that preset, go inside of the individual preset where you'll then have options to adjust your brightness, contrast, colour vibrance, sharpness, colour temperature and other different options. If you do have the option for local dimming and you are using this as a PC monitor, I would nearly in all cases recommend switching local dimming off. Other settings are going to come down to your personal preference, whether you want colour accuracy or if you want to wash out the colours or go for really high sharpness and vibrance for a competitive advantage. The only other setting I'd recommend adjusting with inside of the picture profile will be your gamma setting, which you will typically want to have set to 2.2. Last but not least, if you are running on a relatively modern gaming display, you may also have an option for NVIDIA G-Sync, G-Sync compatible, FreeSync or Enhanced Sync. If you have any of these options available to you and you want to make use of FreeSync or G-Sync technology, you will need to navigate inside of the monitor setting, make sure that that option has then been enabled at a monitor level. If you have enabled that setting in the monitor, the monitor may flick a few times and you'll then be able to set this up in either your AMD or Radeon control panels. Some gaming monitors may also have built-in features such as on-screen crosshairs that you can make use of on some multiplayer or single player games to give you a slight advantage or just to change the crosshair if you can't customize it in your game. Before we finish off with the individual monitor settings, it's also worthwhile pointing out that your monitor brightness can have a rather drastic impact on how much energy your monitor is using. This isn't going to be a massive difference if you're using a single monitor setup, but if you're someone like myself who has a setup with either two or three screens, reducing your monitor brightness in increments of 10% to a level in which you are actually happy with can drastically reduce the amount of energy your monitor is using. We're now ready to jump into the setup settings on the graphics card for your PC to ensure that you have the best output possible. Starting off with those of you on an NVIDIA GPU, right click on your desktop and open the NVIDIA control panel. Alternatively, if that option isn't available, go to the bottom left, search for NVIDIA and open up the NVIDIA control panel. We first of all need to start off by navigating to change resolution in the top left, navigate down to use NVIDIA colors, go to the bottom right and ensure that output dynamic range has been set to full. You can also adjust the output color depth of your panel with inside of here, but you'll want to refer to your panel specs before adjusting this setting. Go to the bottom right, select apply. The next setting I like to make use of is adjust desktop color setting. Select your main monitor, you then have the options for brightness, contrast, gamma, digital vibrance and hue. Here's where you can do slight adjustments to make your color settings something in which you prefer. I'm not particularly fussed about color accuracy on my gaming monitor, so I like to have
have my digital vibrance set to about 75%, which brings up the color levels nicely in most games I play. This is personal preference and you may not want to change these settings whatsoever, but it's worthwhile noting that they are there. If you are now planning on utilizing G-Sync technology, navigate down to Setup G-Sync, select the monitor you're going to be turning this on for, then select Enable G-Sync, G-Sync compatible. I personally prefer to have this set to full screen mode only, as I use a lot of applications in dark mode and every single time I'm scrubbing through footage, I can see the monitor's refresh rate changing and it creates a small flickering issue. So my recommendation would be to set this for full screen applications only, as you're only really going to be utilizing it in games anyway. If you've enabled G-Sync compatible, FreeSync or VRR on your monitor, and you're using a Radeon GPU, right click on your desktop, enter the AMD software control panel, navigate over to gaming, global graphics, display. Inside of here you should then see the option for AMD FreeSync where you should be able to turn this on if you have enabled the technology on your monitor. For your control panel settings, inside of here navigate over to gaming at the top, global graphics, and we can start with display. Proceeding to scroll down to color depth. This is where you'll be able to change the color depth profile for your monitor. It is recommended to check the documentation of your monitor before adjusting this setting for the best results for your PC. For the best color as possible on AMD Radeon GPUs, you want to set this to RGB444. In some cases, you may see better performance using a compressed mode using any of the YCBCR modes. If you're not too fussed about color accuracy, you can also try out the AMD Vivid Gaming mode under Display Color Enhancement. If you want to enable custom colors for the display, navigate over to the right hand side, enable custom colors. On my AMD Radeon GPU, I like to set this to about 115 to 120, but this is complete personal preference. If you want the lowest latency possible and you get incredibly high frame rates in most games you play, G Sync or FreeSync may not be your best option if you are prioritizing low latency. In that case, I'd recommend actually disabling G-Sync by unselecting any options which are selected with inside of here, alongside disabling it in your monitor settings if you are able to do so. To make sure that you have enabled or disabled G-Sync properly, navigate over to Manage 3D Settings on the left-hand side, scroll down to Monitor Technology. If you want to use G-Sync, set this to G-Sync. If you want to switch this off, select Fixed Refresh. It may also be worth noting if you're running at a high resolution and high refresh rate that you may be exceeding the bandwidth level for your monitor if you are using the RGB color format. You could try out both color compression modes which are available to you. These will change the way that colors look on your monitor, but you could get better performance out of your monitor from using this in very niche cases. When using G-Sync or FreeSync technology, it's important to make sure that you are actually getting the best performance out of your monitor and utilizing that technology properly. My best advice would be to implement an FPS cap on most games in which you play where you want to utilize G-Sync. The way that G-Sync or FreeSync works is it's a variable refresh rate window. The window can be different depending on your monitor's refresh rate, but for an easy example, let's say for my 144Hz monitor, G-Sync or FreeSync will work between 20 to 144 frames per second, meaning if our game drops below 20 FPS, G-Sync or FreeSync will no longer be running as we will be running outside of the variable refresh rate window. On the flip side of that, if we're getting over 144 frames per second, we will also be outside of the FreeSync or G-Sync window where the technology will no longer be running and will only be incurring the input latency penalty from having this enabled, giving you a worse experience. You can use the in-game FPS cap for this. My favorite way to cap FPS is to utilize the Reva Tuner Statistics Server program, which comes bundled with MSI Afterburner, and you can check out other videos on the channel covering that. But for ease of use for this video, there are FPS cap methods built into the NVIDIA control panel and the Radeon control panel, which I will show you how to set up and utilize now. Right click on your desktop, open up the control panel for either AMD or NVIDIA. Inside of the control panel, navigate over to Manage 3D Settings. For this, you'll need to navigate up to Program Settings at the top, go to the drop-down menu to select a program to customize. Here is where you'll then select the game application for the game you want to adjust. If you can't find your game with Inside of Fear, go over to Add. Inside of this menu, scroll down until you find the application for the game you want to adjust. For me, I'm going to be setting this for Apex Legends. Select the program, scroll down with inside of these individual settings to the max frame rate, then set your FPS cap with inside of this box. You'll then want to set your maximum frame rate to roughly 3 FPS lower than your monitor's refresh rate. It's because we want our game to be running inside of the G-Sync or FreeSync window at all times. If we set our FPS cap to 144 hertz, the FPS cap will sometimes slip up and accidentally cap your FPS at 145 or 146 or slightly higher higher, which would then take you outside of the G-Sync window. So to ensure that we are always staying within optimal playing range, we're going to be taking roughly 3 FPS off our monitor refresh rate. If you had a 360Hz monitor, you'd cap your FPS to 357. If you had 240Hz, you would go with 237, 144Hz, 141. Go to the bottom right and select apply. Go to your next game, add that in, set the FPS cap and repeat that step so you only have to cap your FPS on the games in which you're planning on actually playing. If you're using an AMD Radeon GPU, 
menu and you wish to cap your FPS at a driver level, navigating over to the gaming tab, selecting global graphics, scroll down until you find advanced towards the bottom, scroll down once again where you should then be able to find frame rate target control. Switch this to the on position and you can then set your maximum FPS with inside of this slider. Once again, I'm on a 144Hz monitor, so I'm going to set this to 3 FPS below just like we did with the Nvidia setting, which is going to be roughly 141, as this will keep us inside of the FreeSync window. If this was a 240Hz monitor, we'd use 237, 360Hz, 257, just 3 FPS below the refresh rate of the monitor in which we're using to ensure that we stay within inside of the FreeSync window at all times for the best and smoothest experience possible and making full use of FreeSync technology. Let me know which settings you've changed for your monitor and what difference that has made. If you have any other tips and tricks, make sure to also leave those in the comment section down below. And if you're looking for more optimizations out of your setup without having to spend a penny, consider checking out the two videos on screen now.